Welcome to Atticon Plays Railway Empire. All right. Hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to Railway Empire, Northern Europe, Hibernation, The Lady, Episode 6. Now, in the last episode, we hauled a whole mess of uh, tools and canned fish over to Norway. And now we've been asked to go uh, work on Denmark. So uh, what we're going to do here, the first thing you see me doing, I'm deleting four trains. Those are the trains that were running from uh, Gothenburg up to that uh, warehouse hauling steel out to John Coping and, uh, and then hauling, setting up tool delivery. Well, we are going through the tools and the steel so quickly now in Gothenburg, shipping off the canned fish and the tools over to Skeen, that uh, that line's not needed. And because it's slow loading, it can hold up uh, our production. I just thought it'd be fun to look to see how we're doing. Six and a half million profit on the um, furniture industry. One, what was it? One like one and a half or so on the sawmill. So uh, obviously uh, that little investment paid off. The way I see it, retirement is not your cup of tea, even though you earned it. But what we've got to do now is gain access to Denmark, which we just did. We paid two point whatever million dollars to go in. Now we're going to deal with our two remaining competitors. So we're going to write a check for about 17 million. And there goes... Uh, there goes our first competitor. Now we'll look at our biggest competitor. And 91 million. Eh, write a check. So bye-bye to him. And in my usual style, we're going to liquidate everything. I do not trust the competitors to help us grow a region. So keep in mind, we've got two things. Well, we had three things to do. Gain access to Denmark. We've done that. And... Um, we will definitely put this uh, um, promoter on a city in, in Denmark. I know Copenhagen is, so we'll put, a, put the promoter on that. And uh, so we've got to gain access to Denmark. We got it. We've got to put our competitors out of business. We've done that. They're all gone. And now, now the toughie, we've got to grow Denmark to uh, 600,000 population. And you look at it and you say, well, it's already, I'm not exactly sure where it is right this moment, but uh, it's probably 500 or so. And you're going, oh, well, how easy is that? Well, it's actually sneaky. It's sort of um, almost like a red herring because you look at it and you say, okay, we don't have to grow it that much. We already got big cities. That's our problem. We already have big cities. And when those big cities are not getting everything they need, they are actually going to start declining. So the challenge in this one is that you can't just go in and say, well, I'll build a couple of cities, you know, a little two-city cluster, I'm done. That won't work. You've got to actually provide goods for all of Denmark, for all of those cities, so that you're not uh, fighting the declining population in some of the cities, which would be offsetting any growth you're getting in the cities you're focusing on. So you've got to kind of spread it out and do something to all of them. So, so we will get there. What we're doing right this minute is setting up a piece of track that runs directly and all the way from Stockholm to Flensborg, which is over in Denmark. And it's, uh, we, ha we have to move 20 people nonstop all the way over there. Now, 20 people is not much, but... It's a it's long, long way over there, and it's crossing mountains and rivers and oceans and, and existing track and lakes and everything under the sun. So, uh, but the, the beauty of it is now, of course, like all things, if we if you have money, not a problem. Well, we've got lots of money, lots of cash. We've already bought out both, all of our competitors, and we're, we've got 167 million kronas. Uh, in the bank right now in cash and we could open massive bonds if we needed to so we're going to um, run this single piece of track it will not be double tracked it'll be a single piece of track so the plan is to have one dedicated piece of track that runs all the way from Stockholm all the way over to that almost the west coast of Denmark 
and that's what we're working on right now crossing over uh, the channel crossing over a bunch of rivers and lakes and everything under the sun trying to stay uh, you know kind of reasonably level with the thing and we got to cross over big water there hop another big body of water but there we go five and a half million kronas later uh, we can have almost a connection it doesn't quite go all the way and and it's actually not that bad because what's happened is when you have these lines and you're building them i'm actually right this minute trying to build a line that one line across the other one the problem is that the the other line i'm trying to cross is actually an extension of this very line we're building when you put a line out there and you leave it and you want to go back and change it and you click on it a lot of times it'll give you the rest of the line it'll it'll make a a, a, a rest of your line so we've got with this line I mean, it's really hard for me to explain it but this line is looped over itself so there i finally punched in and said wait a minute wait a minute where'd that come from and now all i had to do is is uh right click on it and it went away and now we see we're only at a little over two million well, that's nothing two million kronas right now is nothing big deal when you start nothing now so boom there we go now we've got a direct line almost we're not quite done but we've got it over there almost to stockholm now we can just finish it off now that now we've, we've gotten the bulk of it and where we're headed is to platform four of that top station because it just happens to be empty there's nobody running out of that station. Right here, I'm going to confirm that. Zero percent utilization. So we're going to clean up this uh, the double track and take that away and just have that platform be wide open. And then go out and drag it out and finish it in, tie it into our line. Now we've got a direct line piece of track that runs from Stockholm to Flensburg. And we'll go out of track four. And what we're going to do is say, don't take any mail, don't take any goods, and a minimum of two cars worth of passengers. So the reason we're putting a minimum on it is we only have to haul 20. We want to make sure that one train, one trip, this is done. So if we put a minimum of two, we know we're going to, I, I'm not absolutely 100%, I'm about 90% on this, that one, one box car is 20 people roughly so a full box car would be 20 people so if we uh, have a minimum of two we know we're going to get at least 20 people to go over there it might take a minute for it to load that many you know to have that many passengers going all the way to flinsborg but eventually it'll happen and we'll get one train going out through there and we'll lay down some supply towers for it so that uh, the train can keep moving and not get slowed down by lack of supplies but that's going to be it. We're not going to try to double track. We're not going to try to make it a line that we keep. It would be a great line to keep, um, except for one thing. It's going to go run right through the heart of what we're going to have to do over here in Denmark. See this area right through here. This is just right through where we're going to get busy a little bit in just a few minutes in building up Denmark. So we'll, we'll just, again, have a, one nice throwaway piece of track. And that once that train leaves that station we'll know that that task is taken care of now the other way you could do this is, is to uh, is to just link it into your existing network and let the train work its way over there and that would work but it takes a long it would take a long time for it to do that now nightwish just before i i did this nightwish had put a challenge out there in a comment he said he wanted to see if i could build a line uh from that um that station up there that's all out, out in the mountains by itself without doing any bridges or tunnels except for uh, what you would absolutely have to have to cross a, cross a body of water. So here you go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to build, uh, build a line down. There's our one bridge to cross that water. And now we're going to be very careful not to build any more bridges. And this is, I mean, this is pretty uh, pretty rough terrain but we're going to be careful not to build any more bridges or tunnels so we got one big bridge and i was careful where i landed that bridge on the other side to make sure i got over to a spot where i felt like i could i could stay bridgeless going forward now we'll just hug the terrain a little bit and uh ride that ridge this is very easy to do uh with the uh 
with those contour lines turned on. But you can see we're not going. We're going to coming down here and connecting with our main line. Oh, uh, that would have given us a tunnel. But here we go. We can get into that main line. No bridges, no tunnels. Good deal. So we had the one big bridge um, right there, and uh, looking good. I want to confirm that wasn't a bridge right there. Of course, it isn't because we can see the money over here. The, Spending nothing on tunnels and bridges. So there we go. At, uh, there you go, Nightwish. Uh, I'm going to finish this off now by saying, okay, well, it's connecting to that uh, northmost track. Well, that track doesn't actually go. I want to make this a real line. I don't want to just build a track to nowhere. So, um, I mean, this isn't New Jersey or Alaska. So um, I'm going to double track it back like a regular line. And then we're going to go down here and make sure that we can run a line all the way into Oslo. And we'll have a passenger mail line from uh, that uh, city in the middle of nowhere uh, into Oslo. So what I'm going to want to do here is ha give you the ability to go from that... Uh, the two topmost tracks, that double track, over to the other one because it's that lower set that actually goes into the city. And I decided that the way to do that is to clean this track up and make them all appear to be one, one kind of piece of track. So scoot over there right up against the track and, and make it a true double track down through there. Same thing going back. So now that those tracks are except for that very end, but that doesn't matter. We'll be done with it, but, well, I'll take care. <laughs> what am I saying? Here we go. Here we go. Double tracking and making sure it's kind of touching all the way down. There we go. Now we've got clean double track in that section. So what we're going to do here is use the technique that is used by, um, uh, uh, really, basically by those maintenance stations and the auto, uh, auto signal ones. And I started to do it like this and, and, and said, no way, nah, nah, do it, do it, do it right. Do it the way they do it. Make the generic uh, crossovers. So I'm going to take that out and start over. Carefully deleting just the, that, the, the crossing track. There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a little diamond, an X, right here on, the, on one set of tracks. like so. Then we'll put one parallel to it on the other set of tracks right next to it. Like so. Then we'll go into the middle two tracks and put a, a crossing on them as if they were a pair of tracks. Then we go out to the end of that and we build yet another diamond on the end of it with on each pair a little X on each pair of tracks. There we go. Now, by doing that, it's a little hard to see in the snow there, but by doing that, any that the the trains can move from the uppermost pair of tracks to the lowermost and vice versa by going through that section of track right in there. So now we should be able to run a, a line. We're going to run passenger mail line from, um, I, can't, I don't know how to say it, Rukin, I'll call it, down to um, Oslo. And you can see right there how the line, it actually crosses across from the upper uh, pair of tracks to the lower pair. So we'll put the halter on it and give it um, specialty cars and run a second one and do the same thing going back the other direction from Oslo and we've got ourselves a nice little line. We'll call that the Nightwish line because we built that with one uh, bridge and we used our little specialty technique to allow um, the trains to move over from one set of tracks to another. Um, Right there, I, I immediately regretted doing that. I decided not to deal with my troubled people. I thought I'd come back and find the train, and then I realized, how?
<laughs> uh, it's going to be hard to find that train. I got to find the personnel that are fighting each other. And of course, that's why you really want to manage your personnel and not have those fights in the first place. Because the worst thing is with the snowstorm, there's so many warning symbols out there, it's really hard to find the one that shows that they're having a fight. It's really hard to find it. I found myself hoping it's down here in the nice uh, clean area, but it isn't. So I finally say, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And what I ended up deciding was, I'm just going to go open up the train list and just start flipping through the personnel until I find the problem. Haven't quite gotten there yet. I will. There we go. Open up the train list. Open up the personnel screen and just start flipping until I see I, until I see red pop out at me. There. There. I just went whizzing by it, but I noticed that flash, and there we go. There's the offending parties. So we'll get a new stoker there, and it actually turned out nicely because moving that person... Uh, Gave us a good setup there, so okay, problem solved. Okay, we've got our night wish line, we've uh, got our access, we've got our uh, train set up to run Stockholm to Flensburg, and one other thing I wanted to do before I get into the heavy duty city building mode over here in Denmark is get those last two. We've only got two. Uh, little towns up here in uh, Den in uh, Sweden that haven't been connected. I'm assuming this is still Sweden here. Uh, so I uh, wanted to get them connected. So I built one little piece of track just to connect to the network, which will then allow us to go ahead and set up uh, that station plus the next one here in Arvika. And uh, we're going to hook up Arvika to, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the other little town, uh, but the railroad has come to town, so uh, big Carlstad. So now we're going to set up a little passenger mail line, which will be surprisingly um, profitable between these two little cities. This is, again, I think this is why the lady is just so strong, because when you think about your early start, you're just trying to say, how can we make money up front to really fund ourselves and get going so we can do the things we need to do quickly? And the lady can, you can go out to these, even this, a map like this where the cities are so small to start, you can run profitable passenger mail lines, particularly when you're, you know, you put those cars on them and get a few uh, employees on them to get some bonuses. And uh, you can just make all kinds of money because she's adding additional bonuses on top of that. So we'll set up our little line here. And I'm contrasting that with, uh, you know, the people who are more industry or freight oriented, like, you know, Don Lorenzo or, or Roger. They, small, it's hard to get a lot of industry going in small uh, little towns, but you can get some decent passenger mail. And there we can see our train has started off to Flensburg. So we know that as long as we don't mess that one up, as long as it keeps going, uh, that, that task will be over with pretty soon. So now it's time to start growing Denmark. Now, again, this seems easy. We only have to go from like, say, 500 or maybe even be 520 right now to 600. It's actually hard because you can't just pick a couple of C's and grow them because you're going to have cities declining. If you can see right here, the way the screen is set right here, that city up to the left of the screen is is declining so we're losing ground in that city which means our population is actually going down because none of them are growing right now we're not we don't have any lines running uh, 
And by the way, I contemplated leaving the bigger of the two rivals, just buying him out and just leaving the, the stuff and letting his routes continue running. And I don't believe that that would work either because you're still declining. If you want it done right, do it yourself. And the best thing to do in my mind is just kill off the uh, AI completely, liquidate all his assets, or well, they're now they're your assets, liquidate everything and build your own lines that work. Now, the other thing that's going to make this very doable for us is we're going to go back to the way, um, well, really the way I've, I've been talking about playing this game since it came out. We're going to build little city clusters. This first one is the one we're looking at here at the screen. I'm really, the reason this, nothing's happening, I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm planning this out. I'm looking at this and saying, okay, how do I want to attack this? And what I decided to do finally was going, we're going to build a little Johnny Hughes three city cluster. That's what I call it, where we put the warehouse on the middle city. So that city right there, and you have to forgive me, I can't see the name of it. Uh, but anyway, that middle city is going to get a warehouse. We're going to put a station in Copenhagen. And we're going to put um, a station in that city, whatever it is, sorry. Um, well, and not yet we're not. Why can't we? Because we have put a station in Copenhagen and it isn't touching our network. There's no line running from that station to our network. So we need to fix that. We need to make a connection. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just make a quick little connection to that uh, milk business up there. So that that is connected now to our network because of that uh, line we built. And now we can connect that to the um, to the warehouse, which is something we were going to do anyway. I need to flip over to the other side. I'm running it off the wrong side. Here we go. Now I'm punching in. Okay, so now we've got that warehouse as part of our network, but we still don't have Copenhagen. Uh, connected to our network. It's still hanging out there by itself. So while I'm here, we'll start milk delivery. And start vegetable delivery and I'll explain how this uh, the little Johnny Hughes three city uh, cluster works in just a minute after it's kind of built out we'll just watch the pieces get built and then I'll explain how the whole thing well you know what I take that back uh, I don't need to tell you every time I'm laying track let's just talk about the theory the theory is this I want to build three cities I want to supply them all with goods each of the three cities is going to manufacture products. We're going to manage what goes in each of the three cities so that we have ideally six, six to nine different industries in there, depending on how big they get. If they get really big, we'd have nine. If they get fairly big, we'll have six, two in each city. So we'll have different industries in each city, and they will share their manufactured goods with each other by having city-to-city -city lines. And then we'll have this warehouse that, that is connected to um, the middle city there. And that, that city will automatically, of course, feed out of that warehouse. Then we'll have lines that run from the warehouse back to our other two cities, and that is going to allow them to be fed the uh, raw materials. 
And what I'm doing right here is just seeing where can I put a museum real fast because these cities are going to go into decline. In fact, some of them have already seen that. See how they're all red? They're all diminishing. Every one of them losing population, almost all of them. So uh, they've actually, they were all up from the 65, 70,000 mark, and now they've, they've dropped. Like, look here, Aarhus is over 100,000 people. That's a lot of people and needs a lot of things, and it's declining. So, and oh, and the other reason I can't put a, a warehouse or a museum in, in there is I have to have a station, a, a train station in the city before I can build a specialty building in there. So um, I, I was, <laughs> I was thinking, man, I got to need to get that museum in there and get that ten percent bump on satisfaction and keep these cities from declining. But I got to get out there first. So one thing you could think about doing is just go ahead and lay out your overall network of all your stations uh, if you've got good money uh, right away and get the museums in. That would be a good thing to do to uh, slow down that decline in population. But anyway, here we go. We're going to link uh, Copenhagen. And now because Copenhagen is linked to the warehouse and because the warehouse is linked to the milk and the milk is linked to that line that goes all the way back to Stockholm, now we are part, now Copenhagen is part of our network. And that will allow us to move to the next city and put a station in whatever city we want to move into next. I'm sorry. I still, when I'm doing these voiceovers, I really don't have the full screen to look at. So I, I still, I'm still not sure what the name of those two, those two cities are. But this left city, Odense. Okay, Odense. Um, we want to have a line that runs to the warehouse from Odense. And uh, it won't let you cross just anywhere on that big body of water. So we're going to have to swing down here to the south a little bit and find a spot where it will let us cross. There we go. We can build a bridge there. And aside, I wanted to keep that that line that's the uh, uh, passenger line from Stockholm just pure. I don't want to share it with other stuff. I'm just going to let that one train run till it's finished. And then, honestly, we're going to get rid of that track after we get the task done because it's just in the way. But for now, we're just going to deal with it, build some bridges, whatever we have to do to get over it, around it, under it, whatever we have got to do to uh, keep moving. So here's a line to uh, the, our warehouse from Odense. And we've already got uh, Copenhagen to the warehouse. So in effect, all three of the cities of our three-city cluster are attached to that one warehouse. So we're going to keep loading stuff into it. Now we're going to bring uh, fish down there. We've already gotten veggies and we've gotten uh, milk. See, this is the pain of that extra piece of track we've got there. We've got to build bridges that we wouldn't have to build otherwise. But again, when you got the you know late game, when you've got lots of money, it's, it's, you can bear this kind of stuff. Early on, this would not; these big expensive bridges would not be acceptable. Try to, and we'll try to be careful with all these um, intersections. Make sure I leave a. Uh, you know, knock down those ones that I'm intersecting into so we don't get trains stopping in the wrong place and tying things up. So now we're going to run uh, a line into our warehouse for the fish. So we've got milk, veggies, and fish. We'd like to have wheat, logs, and fruit. So in other words, just raw materials, basic raw materials are what we're going to put in our warehouses down over here in Denmark. Now we need a direct line of pigs into Copenhagen because it, it has, and I can't decide if it's Hagen or Hagen. I'll, I'll probably, I've already used both, I know. Um, so Copenhagen, yeah, that sounds cool. So uh, we're going to run pigs directly into Copenhagen because it has the meat industry. Uh, and we want, we, we want it to feed the other two cities and itself, of course. I 
Now here I kind of just had a little, I'm, I'm rusty playing the game. I, I kind of forgot that since I used that flat connection there, you know, where this cross, the, the, where it goes flat over there, you've got to just uh, set it up with um, uh, anchor points on either side of your intersection and then just drag it out till you get the nice uh, uh, flat track. And I'm having some trouble with this one for some reason. I can't, I'm, I, it doesn't quite want to cooperate. So what I decided to do here, actually just cut it off on either side and have it come down and, and uh, if it needs to wait on the milk, it'll wait. Most of the time it won't. I didn't have the patience to sit there and continue playing with that intersection. The other option, of course, would just be a bridge or a tunnel to go over or under that line. But yeah, I, I think the big one of the problems is it's really, it's pretty close to, the, to the, that lower track that's going into Copenhagen. So this will work just fine, uh, you know, having it come down and go across on a single piece of track. And it's not like we're running 50 trains. We're going to be running three or four trains of pigs down through there. There we go. So now we've got pigs into Copenhagen. We've got, which is actually diminishing, by the way. That symbol over there is telling us that it has uh, declined in population. So now we want to get our regular train station in, in our cent center city so that we can hook up uh, city to city lines. So we want to have a city to city line between Copenhagen, <laughs> I really truly can't decide which way to say it, Copenhagen Hagen and uh, our cent center city. Um, all right, so uh, the Swedish, the Swedes have gotten a good laugh out of the first few. Uh, Norway got its laugh. Now uh, those of you from Denmark can get your laugh at how I say these names. But um, Nasvad, I, I really truly can't read it. Sorry, but um, we're, we're setting it up so that we can have city to city line between the center city and each of the two ends, so that they can share goods. And I actually, it's funny, I did a variation on this one. I, really, it was, a, it was a mistake. I kind of forgotten how to do these things. I am rusty on this game. And uh, um, uh, you'll see in a minute. I'm ahead of myself. There we go. Now we can put a museum in Odense, and that'll help. That'll give it 10% uh, demand satisfaction. I love museums. They're my favorite building, definitely. In the game, at least. Oh, I like them in, in real life, too, but definitely in the game. So, here we go. Here's our first city-to-city -city line. It's going to be freight only. Is it? No. It's going <laughs> to change my mind. Just that change the narration. It's going to be automatic because it's basically its job is to haul whatever goods are produced in uh, Odense over to the center city. And then, um, Neist, I, God, I can't read that. Neistved. Okay, so Neistved, uh, it's going to haul goods and then top off with passengers and mail. And in, going back the other way, now we're running a line between, and this was a goof up here. Copenhagen and um, Odense, and uh, this really should, this is where I goofed up, at least in terms of the pure Johnny Hughes uh, three city cluster. What I should have done is run Odense to the warehouse, to Copenhagen to the warehouse, and that way uh, you're, you're, and done it as a freight only line, and that way it would have run uh, it would have picked up the manufactured goods and shared them between those two cities, and it would have topped off 
with the raw materials in the warehouse that are needed by the by the target by the city it's headed to, and that would have that would have been perfect. As it is, I, this works just fine. But what we'll have to do now is have other trains that actually pick up goods in the warehouse and take them to Odense, and other and then still other trains that pick up goods and take them to Copenhagen. And uh, a cleaner solution really would have been to have the um, the pass-through warehouse approach where you have. So what you're really doing in this kind of design is you're putting a pass-through warehouse that happens to be attached to a city. So that city's automatically getting the uh, raw materials that are brought there to the warehouse. And then your two cities that are participating in the pass-through, you know, going city warehouse, city warehouse, they're getting the goods that way. So now that one warehouse is serving three cities. And, and this is a very effective uh, way to do city growth, particularly up to, oh, I don't know, maybe 90, 100,000 or so. It, it's tough to t make the cities too much bigger than that um, using this approach. You can, but it's a little tough because one, it's, you're really asking a lot out of that one warehouse. But um, the other thing we see here is that crappy industry. We don't want porcelain. Uh, what we want, we want in our three city cluster, we want obviously a sausage and a bread. Then what we'd love to have is uh, textiles and clothing, because they're complementary. And then uh, something else that we can easily supply that we can put in. For example, and that's a good one, the cheese. The dairy farm is perfectly good. A log, a sawmill would be fine. Uh, you know, anything that we, we feel like we can easily uh, um, supply so that we get six different businesses in this set of three cities, and that way they can share goods, they'll already have raw materials, all is well. So there you see I'm setting up trains that are just shuttling back and forth warehouse to city. So it's going, the first ones were warehouse to... Uh, um, Odense and now warehouse to Copenhagen. So now we've got now that should be that should be really good, frankly, right there. Uh, we don't have logs coming in down there. And we don't have wheat yet, but once we do, oh, and the uh, fruit. Once we get all that lined up, uh, we're going to have uh, these three cities will be set to do some pretty good growth for us. And I'm just checking out to see just how busy we are. That's not too bad. There's a spy there, but unfortunately, it, it probably got queued up before I bought everybody out. There's nobody to spy on, so it will do us absolutely no good. Oh, and I, I, forgive me, I, I, I said we didn't have wheat. We just did the wheat. We've got wheat going into the warehouse now. And now what we want to have is uh, uh, get the fruit lined up and get it preloaded in there. Here you can see what a pain that, that one line, that one track that's given us our... Uh, passenger line from Stockholm uh, dealing with it just just gets it's in the way it's just simply in the way if it wasn't there it'd be much cleaner to do this uh, kind of hookup we're doing right now so again we want to get rid of those short uh, tight uh, blocks right at the intersection so that there's plenty of room for a full train to move through now we can run fruit over to our uh, um, warehouse so that gives us milk and fish and wheat and fruit and vegetables and all we're missing would be the logs. And here we're starting to see some trains coming over with supplies over to Copenhagen. We saw uh, a train load of uh, vegetables. And I believe this next train here, yeah, here we go. This train right here has some more vegetables and fish. 
So uh, we're starting to get our supplies over to Copenhagen and it's going to go from dwindling to neutral. Notice we got one growing and two dwindling right now. Our one in the middle, it's the one that's getting those supplies first. It's actually growing. Our two on the ends are dwindling. They're declining in population. However, we've got the stuff set up now to get over there and supply them so that we can at least get them to neutral. That's what we want. We want to have all of our cities in Denmark at a minimum to neutral. And of course, we want as many as possible growing all the time. And there, I'm just double checking and sure enough, our our train has left the station not only that but it's out there it's all the way into denmark now so it's not too far from um hitting what we want so now we can think about getting logs from over there in sweden the that's the the force that we own that we use to for our furniture industry our sawmill and our furniture so we're going to double track now and piggyback on that line that we already built uh, and just use it as our bridge to get over into Denmark. That's a nice cheap bridge because it's a, it's a place where the, the two countries are very close to one another on this map. And so now we can uh, uh, start building that line. And what we'll do is get rid of the, the temporary track that we built to hook us into our network originally. And now we can just double track down, like I said, down through here and figure out how we want to get over to the warehouse. And at this point I realize I don't actually want to go that far. I want to go come down, but then I want to actually hook into the um, that milk line. So keep in mind, this was the line that was coming from Stockholm. We're repurposing part of it to be to come from our logs over in Sweden to come down and to fill into this warehouse. Now at this point I'm hesitant to really delete that line or even a part of that line. I don't want to do anything to mess up this train right here because it's one of our tasks. If it gets to all the way to Flensborg and, and uh, unloads, we're done. So I'm just going to ride along on this thing and just wait until it's finished. I really don't want to mess up and here the silly thing breaks down. Remember it doesn't get maintenance on that whole long trip. so. Um, I'm going to go in and replace it, basically. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I know some of you really like to ride along with your trains. I seldom do, and one reason it seems like every time I do, something bad happens. The train breaks down or something really weird happens, and I get frustrated. So I just, uh, maybe I'm bad luck. I don't know. So let's get that thing in here and finish up that first task. Get those 20 if passengers non-stop, there we go. And now we're going to um, Sweden, I would have delete that train. To be a figment of it, imagination. It, it made like 79,000 krona on that one-way run, but that's too slow. 
uh, and we don't want that track. That track is just in our way. It's just we're having to build bridges over it, mess with it. We have been able to reuse this part for the logs, but it's in our way. So why don't we stop right here? When we come up, uh, come back, it'll be we'll we'll have our final episode in this series where we wrap up this mission by continuing to grow Denmark. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.